right, let's talk about the law of cosines. So here's a triangle I have drawn and labeled in our convention. And here's the law of cosines. And the derivation is in your text if you would like to see it. Um, it's not an easy, as easy a derivation as the law of sines, but nonetheless you can follow it. So it says that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine gamma. Likewise, we can also say a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine alpha and b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine beta. So these are all the same formula, it just would depend on, you know, they're all the same thing just depending on what you called a, b, and c. All I'm doing is writing it in three different ways and I'm doing this to show a pattern because this helps you memorize the formula. First of all, if you've got C on this side, like you're solving for C, then the angle over here is always the one that goes with C. So in this case, it's gamma. So if I have A on the left, I have alpha over here on the right. If I have B on the left, I have beta on the right. So that's how I always remember that. The next thing I remember is, let's pick a different is if I have c squared here, then I always have a squared and b squared here. And I can remember that because it reminds me very much of the Pythagorean theorem. So that for the second one, if I have a squared here, then I gotta have b squared and c squared. Likewise, if I have b squared on the left, then I gotta have a squared and c squared. So that's the second thing that helps me remember it. All right, and then the third thing is if I have a squared and b squared here, then I also have an a and b here. Likewise, b squared c squared, so there's a b and a c here, and a squared c squared, then there's an a and a c here. And two, there's just a lot of ways that you could remember there's a two in here. You could remember a two because there's two sides here maybe that would help you remember there's a two. And then the other thing, and I don't really have a super good way to remember this is minus, other than you just got to remember that that one's minus. So maybe you can come up with a great way to remember that that is minus. All right, let's work an example. So here's an example. So I know that a is 4 and b is 12 and c is 9. So you can see right away that I have a side, side, side condition here. And let's go ahead and make our box. All right, so a is 4, B is 12, C is 9, Alpha is unknown, Beta is unknown, and Gamma is unknown. Right. So one of the ways that I um, know to use the law of cosines here, because I don't memorize, I mean I have, but I don't need to memorize that this is a side, side, side condition. If I just do this box, then I can see, or rather I don't see a match. So because I don't have an angle that corresponds with a side that I know both of those things, then I cannot use the law of sines. If I cannot use the law of sines, therefore that means I have to use the law of cosines. All right, so we're going to use the law of cosines. So let's just pick one of them to solve for. So let's pick c squared. Let's just, I don't know, we'll just pick that one to solve for. All right, so c squared is equal to a squared, so that's 4 squared, plus b squared, which is 12 squared, minus 2 times a, which is 4, times 12, which is b, times the cosine of gamma. So I'm solving for the cosine of gamma. All right, so I've been kind of, um, oh wait, I put c squared in here. Let's fix that up and put a 9 here. There we go. 9 squared. And now we're going to solve for gamma. So I've been talking for this whole uh, chapter about holding all your calculations to the end. And this is where it will really pay off for you. So we are not going to pick up our calculator. What we are going to do is we are going to solve this for gamma. Alright, so I'm going to subtract 4 squared and 12 squared simultaneously from both sides. So I have 9 squared minus 4 squared minus 12 squared, and this equals a minus 2 
times 4 times 12 times cosine gamma. Okay. And now I want to divide both sides by a minus 2 times 4 times 12. And so now I am left with I'm left with having to erase is what I'm left with. Let's erase our formulas here. You already have them written on your paper. Okay, make us just a little bit more room here. Alright, so now I'm left with working up here. Now I'm left with the cosine of gamma is going to equal 9 squared minus 4 squared minus 12 squared all over minus 2 times 4 times 12. Alright, now these are nice, simple, easy numbers. They're not always going to be nice, simple, easy numbers. Alright, so when you type that in the calculator, so let's do that. In let's type that in the calculator. Alright, so I think you can see that. Parentheses. So I've got 9 squared, 9 squared, minus 4 squared, minus, what was the other one? 12 squared, and a parentheses, divided by parentheses, negative 2 times 4 times. 12. There we go. Enter. Alright, so the cosine, um, let me just pull this down for a minute. So the cosine of gamma equals 0.8229. So hold right there. Hold that in your calculator because now we're going to do the inverse. Um, actually, let's sketch it on paper first. So gamma is going to be equal to inverse cosine of 0.8229. Two, two, Alright, so keeping all those decimals, see all those decimals right there? This is what you're going to do. You're going to go to second cosine, so there's your inverse. And before I get further, let me just make sure I'm in the degree mode. Yes, I am. Okay. Alright, so now rather than typing all that in, I'm going to go second answer. So it pulls in all of those decimals, and I get 34 point six degrees. Alright, so gamma is thirty four point six degrees. That's the law of cosines and that's how that works. Alright, so let me fill this in. What do we say? That was gamma, right? So thirty four point six degrees. Okay. So now at this point, looky here. At this point you gotta match, don't you? If you wanted you could use law of sines to then get beta, and then of course um, uh, add the two together, subtract from 180 to get alpha. Caution, caution. If you use the law of sines, you have to check for the ambiguous case. Okay. Law of cosines, you don't need to do that. All right, so that's the end of this example.